Um, so a couple months ago, I stumbled upon this infographic here, um, which I thought was quite interesting, right? Because it's, it highlights what were the most popular job types in the US, uh, and this is 1978. Um, so you see like a lot of secretaries, a lot of uh, truck drivers, um, things like that. Or actually, I think it was only f farmers. Sorry, it was farmers and secretaries at the time. But 20, yeah, 20 years later, you started seeing a lot more truck drivers. So globalization is kind of kicking in. And there's a little computer analyst right in the right-hand corner. Um, 20 years later, again, we see that we now have uh, a lot of software developers around. So this is, this is something that's becoming more common, right? There's, and it's not even the title computer analyst anymore. And seeing all this, you know, it, it kind of got me going because I, I created my first website in 1995. And I thought I was doing something really, really wrong back then. Right? Like, oh, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I should be studying for school, doing some more productive work. Um, and then 10 years later, like in 2005, I was still, hmm, you know, this is not really a real industry. I'm not sure if you can make money, but it's, it's fun having as a side job and as a, as a hobby. Um, and now, you know, like fast forward by, you know, 11 years, um, this is, this is a very normal job, right? Like, this is actually a cool job. People want to have this job. People want to be in this industry. Um, and it even comes with a, a, a lot of uh, lifestyle elements, if you want, right? Uh, there's, there's remote working. There's this nomadic lifestyle. Um, it, it's all very progressive in itself, right? Like, you have good employment benefits. Um, usually, people are, are pretty forward-thinking in terms of how we work. Um, and all, all these things are, are really, really great. And WordPress has played uh, a, a massive role, um, you know, kind of getting that far, right? Because it, it's been a big component of web development in the last, um, you know, 13 years, uh, or even coming close to 14. Um, but what's interesting uh, to me is that um, I feel as, as if sometimes we've, you know, we've, we've kind of been stuck in our own little ecosystem of what WordPress is. Um, so to illustrate my point, um, if you look at uh, a common theme on uh, WordPress, you know, on WordPress.org, and, and you, you find a, a theme on there, you know, a top theme, uh, and you t take any one, they're all quite, quite similar in nature, right? So this is, this is one of the larger ones. Uh, the, the logo's in the top left corner, uh, navigation's in the right-hand side. Uh, you see there's a, there's a hero image of the call to action. And then you start kind of, you know, scrolling down, and yes, you have your blog posts and your blog metadata. You have your sidebar with the tags, uh, and then you have your footer with the three columns and a terminal footer. And what, what's quite interesting about this, right, is that we've kind of gone to the point where we, we know um, we, we can go online and see a website and be like, hmm, that was built on WordPress. Right? We can kind of be like, this is WordPress-y. We have that feeling. Um, but what, what's really, really interesting ab about this, and let's go back to the sidebar for a second, um, almost every theme comes with this file called sidebar.php. How many of you have worked with sidebar.php? OK, a fair few of you. Um, now, for those of you who haven't worked with sidebar.php, um, it's this file uh, inside your WordPress theme directory that gives you the illusion of doing something when it really does nothing at all. Right? It, it serves no purpose. And I can prove this point to you. So if we go back to the sidebar, and, and let's take the most useless widget out of all, right? the archives. Right? It's, uh, it's, it's always landed there somehow. Um, but let's take the archives. And if you zoom in, and you, and you keep zooming in, and you go a bit further, a uh, little more. And here, we have to start enhancing, right? enhancing the image, like CSI. And you'll see why sidebar.php is the devil. <laughs> huh? So thank you. <laughs> Jokes aside, um, the idea I'm, I'm trying to push forward is that there, there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things in our ecosystem that 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 that, um, that guide the concept of what a website is supposed to be and what a website is supposed to to look like. Um, and WordPress is is great at solving the needs of small businesses, and people also have to make a profit, right? But somehow we we've landed in in, in this world of um, you know, having these column lay the, these various like two and three column layouts with having these widget areas that we fill out and we kind of throw these widgets at them, right, to kind of make them stick and, and fill out the website, right? Like, oh, this website looks so empty, what should I put there, 
another widget. You know? and so we've kind of gotten stuck in this. And what I'd like to push, push forward today is that you know, the web has become a lot more interesting. There's a lot more other things we can do. And WordPress can be a big part of that. Um, so let's take uh, another website, for example, here. This is the World Wildlife Fund. Um, it's the Tiger Challenge. And you can see that's me moving my mouse around uh, and also scrolling the pages. Uh, but what's interesting is that this is like a, a campaign site to get you to run to, to save the tigers. And at some point it says, yes, there's, you know, there's 450 tigers left. Um, but it kind of dawns on you that the amount of particles that are being used um, are about 450. Um, so th they've, they've, they've made the entire tra uh, transformation from uh, tigers to, um, to a person running and, and really been able to, to bring out the, the, the most immersive sort of experience that one can do with something like this. But it's a much more compelling experience, right? Um, and to, to, to think about you know, what I just showed you before, this hero image, and just let, let's throw on a call to action right in the mid middle, you know, that's kind of like a, an easy way out, whereas uh, trying to do less things, but trying to do those uh, a, a, in a lot better kind of way is, you know, it's sure it's, more, it's, a, it's a lot more challenging, but the benefits are that much larger. Um, so let's take an, an another like uh, abused kind of effect, uh, and that's the, the parallax effect, right? Um, so this is, this is called the boat, uh, and this is a, a story that's online. It was created by SBS, which is a media company in Australia, um, and this is parallax in an absolutely beautiful way. Right? Uh, it's not being abused, but it, it took a lot of time to do correctly. And we, we see these sort of interactions happening on, on a large scale um, across the entire web. Right? Entire pages are interactive. You don't have to switch page. You can stay on a, a page. You can have different interactions. Um, and, and you can really derive uh, value from it uh, by just staying on that one uh, place. But you can also derive your, your value a lot quicker. You know, it could be in a single click as opposed to three or four different clicks. Uh, I think the, the Facebook like buttons are also a great metaphor for that, you know, in terms of, yes, there's these big platforms and these big websites that are all very interactive, but then also the smallest of details have also grown with the web, right? The, the simple like button that we've, you know, we used to know has now grown up to be all these different, uh, this different range of emotions. Um, so this is obviously not to say that you know, websites are all becoming platforms or all websites are becoming a web application but rather that uh, consumers are seeking superior um, user experience, for lack of a better term, uh, and they're looking for value, right? The, the modern front end is JavaScript powered um, in, in that regard. So if you know, platforms and web applications represent this, this, this one end of the spectrum, um, then the way we used to do business in, in the web design industry uh, represents the other, right? Uh, and I, and I came across this great example of the old way of doing business um, uh, a couple weeks back. And I, I saw this company, and they were it was a web design company, advertising their services, uh, charging per page. Do you guys remember when, when that used to exist, right? You, you charged like 200, uh, I guess like 2,000 sec for you know, a page, uh, and then you'd be like, oh, I want six pages, right? And you'd kind of order your website like that. Um, it, it's quite awkward, right? Like, can you imagine calling the, you know, that company up and saying, hey, I'd, I'd love to have a website. They're like, uh, how many pages? And you say, well, I want one. They say, uh, anything else you want on that page? And you're like, hmm, infinite scroll. Um, so <laughs> it's, the, the web has completely changed, right? Uh, so we really do need to take um, a, a different perspective in that regard, that WordPress is a tool which is used with other tools, right? And not a solution which is simply deployed uh, to live off the grid with a bunch of plugins and a bunch of themes somewhere, right? It, it kind of feels like the, the Truman Show sometimes. You guys remember that movie where it was like this glass dome and they lived their perfect life in there? And I feel when I look at some WordPress websites, it, it's a lot of that, right? It's, it's the WordPress installation, it's the theme on top, and it's the plugins and they just live by themselves, completely separate to the rest of the web. So to, 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 to visualize that a bit, this is the traditional website, uh, for, for lack of a better term. Um, 
the, the front end is completely powered through um, uh, WordPress theming, which we're, all, we're pretty much all used to in this room. Um, it's, yes, it comes with the benefit of infinite widgets, but you know, we've, we've talked about that now a bit. Um, and it, it's easy to grow, and it's easy to, to kind of get into. And this, is, this has been the, 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 the success of, of WordPress. This is why it's gone so far. Um, but a lot of us in this room, I think, are here because you know, we're, we're trying to push our boundaries of what we're able to do and what we're able to offer our clients or the, the kind of things we want to build. Um, so the idea, um, if, if we think about WordPress differently and simply as a means to create content, for example, and, and manage content, not necessarily to display it, um, we can start thinking of WordPress as a publishing platform. Right? So it's not a website uh, builder anymore, it's a publishing platform. Right? It's a place where uh, editors and authors go to manage their content, and then that is displayed through a separate um, tool, be it the REST API with a JavaScript front end. So Human Made is a company that Tom, Joe, and myself own, um, and I think we're about 42 humans today uh, around the world. We, we've done a lot of uh, enterprise work on WordPress, be it for Skype, Airbnb, uh, Greenpeace, um, so on and so forth. Um, you know, we're always working with WordPress, but we don't really consider ourselves a WordPress company, right? We, we, we stay open-minded. We want to consider ourselves a technology company. Um, so one of the things we've, we've done in that regard is we've uh, organized a day of rest, which is a one-day conference for the REST API. But I'm not really here to talk about the conference itself, but the website that we built for it is actually, um, it's, it's actually a, a decoupled website. So it, it runs WordPress on the background, uh, but the entire front end is React, uh, and that's communicating to WordPress through the REST API. Um, so this is, an, an, this is a, an example of using WordPress as a publishing platform, right? Um, whereby, uh, you know, when, when you're switching pages, um, everything just uh, loads instantly, right? So it's just getting grabbed, uh, the data is being grabbed, and it's being rendered inside the DOM uh, right there and then. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to switch uh, to a page, so it provides a, a much more seamless experience for the user. Um, so the cool thing about this is that it's available on GitHub, right? Uh, we, so we've co completely open sourced it, and that's the reason why I provided this as an example. Um, if, if you were to look for human-made and you're look to, to look for a day of rest uh, inside of GitHub, you would then find our repository there, which you can um, butcher to pieces, use, do whatever you want with. So. Quite simple uh, in, in, this, in, in this example. Um, we're really just using uh, custom post types and, and a lot of the, the standard WordPress features uh, and then communicating that through the WordPress REST API to React, uh, to the React front end. Uh, so really, really um, straightforward. Now, if we go even a step further uh, and, and, and try to um, think of you know, moving the center of gravity uh, away from um, not the front of the website, not, w, not WordPress admin, but even a, a step further below, we can start thinking of WordPress as an application platform. Right? So this is where the majority of content that's managed is, is done so in a programmatic fashion. Right? And we, do, we don't have editors and authors uh, getting into the website and, and, and typing around and you know, edit, you know, using WP admin in a, in a very sort of uh, editorial way. Um, so everything's really pushed a lot further down. Um, so WordPress really becomes, in this case, the engine or the hub uh, for the website in that it, 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 it accepts data, it, um, or sorry, receives data, uh, stores the data, and then is able to push it uh, on again through various APIs. Now, an example of this is Happy Tables. Um, Happy Tables, a few of you may be familiar with. Uh, we pivoted away from building websites for restaurants to being a platform whereby restaurant technology is unified in a single place. So be it like the, the point of sale terminal, uh, the reservations, online ordering. For a single restaurant, we try to unify that all in a single place. Now, the way that this takes shape, um, and one of the first things we did uh, when we created it was a dashboard. Uh, so this contains various data from different streams. But what's interesting is that although this is a, a web view, right, it's uh, something that's rendered in a browser, it doesn't really work like that because it's, it's something that's on a tablet sitting, in, um, sitting on a wall uh, inside of a kitchen in a restaurant. Right? So the, the, the use case here for WordPress is becoming completely different. Right? It, it's, there's, there's almost no more website. 
If we want to take that a step further, we also send out emails um, to the various staff uh, of the restaurant to let them know how they're performing, um, how, you know, how their daily sales were, and that's something where there's absolutely no web view at all. Right? So like from a theming perspective or anything like that, we don't have that. Right? WordPress is the engine that powers these, these, these different uh, outputs or these different results that are, that are visualized in, in, in different manners. So to, to map this out, it starts to get a bit more complicated, I guess. Um, so we have a lot of data coming from th these different sources. Uh, we store it inside of WordPress, and then we push it on, uh, you know, be it for React, for the front end, for the dashboard, or we use uh, Mandrill for transactional emails um, uh, to, to handle that side of it. Uh, so this is probably as, you know, it's starting to get as far away as possible from traditional WordPress, I guess. Um, another example that we've built is Nomad Base. Um, so, oops, let me see if I can go back. I'm in trouble. Yeah. So, Nomad Base is a tool to help um, location-independent professionals, or you know, digital nomads, remote workers, to find each other when they're moving around. Um, so, it hooks into your social channels like Swarm, uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, to figure out, hey, you know, you just checked in somewhere. Let's update your location on the map. Uh, so what this looks like, uh, this is my travel map. Uh, so this is my personal travel map uh, inside of Nomad Base. So I'm Swiss, so this is why it shows Zurich as a center of all things. Um, so it has all that data for the last three years, and then also has the data for everyone else. So now I can zoom in, uh, you know, zoom right in on Stockholm, and see, okay, you know, these are the other people that are here today. Um, so you know, Mil Milan is here somewhere. Uh, Mike's in the room. Um, you know, a bunch of other people. Uh, so we've been able to create something like this, which is really a one-page application, which uses React on the front end, and again, uses, you know, WordPress on the back end. Um, here, what's quite interesting is that we also um, shoot out the information that we store inside of WordPress to other places. So it goes out to Slack, and it also goes to React Native, because we're building a, an iOS app um, for it now. Uh, for Nomad Base itself, uh, because it's much easier to grab data from a phone than it is to try and grab it from all these different locations. Um, another interesting use case I saw for WordPress being used in a completely different manner was from the Japanese community. This was uh, Hidetaka, which uh, used Amazon Echo uh, to, to power his WordPress um, site somehow. Um, he didn't quite know how to use it, but knowing the Japanese community, this can go a lot of different ways. Um, so <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see what happens there, right? Um, so these are all cool examples. You know, they're, they're, they're fun to look at and maybe a bit intimidating or daunting if you've never worked with the REST API or you haven't worked a, a lot with JavaScript. Um, so the, the question, you know, begins uh, is really, you know, where do you begin? Where do you start with this kind of stuff? Um, so the first thing I'd say here is learn JavaScript. Right. Um, it, it, it's everybody's been saying it for you know a year now, uh, but it, it, we really come to that point where um, knowing JavaScript, if, if you're a developer, is, is is fundamental. It's the language of the browser. It's it's how we create um, a, a lot of compelling experiences. Uh, if you're a non-developer, it's just important to know what JavaScript is capable of. Right. So even if you're not a developer, you can't just say, oh, I don't know about this language stuff. You kind of do have to know, just to, to understand what it's capable of. Um, and on that same note, um, the, the, the second challenge I put forward um, is to, to really start with the end in mind. Uh, when you know, looking forward or looking towards new WordPress projects or any other sort of web projects that you're doing, um, and not really the limitations of the tool. So this comes back to the idea that um, WordPress you know, in itself has um, the, these perceptions of how we're supposed to use it. It has the widgets, it has sidebar.php, it has the navigation, it has the customizer. There's various funnels that maybe push our way or sort of uh, uh, you know, convince us to, to, do, to build a website in a certain way, um, which is maybe not the right thing to do. You know, maybe a website only really needs one sort of interactive element, uh, and we need to do that one thing, but do it really, really well, as opposed to do a lot of different things and kind of just fill the website, right? Um, and the last challenge I have for you is to make um, WordPress invisible, you know, or at least to try. Um, you know, give it, try a project here or there to see, oh, can I build something that, you know, is, is just very, very different. And in this case, um, you know, this is our uh, Slack integration for Nomad Base. 
Uh, so now I type in, you know, where is Noel? And Noel was last seen in Stockholm. So uh, that works quite well. Uh, Mike created this, so he'll be speaking here today. Um, Mike's probably around here somewhere. Um, but it's really cool because you push WordPress you know, far enough down the stack that it's not visible on the front end and it's not visible on WP Admin because no one uses it. Um, so it, it really becomes that engine behind uh, larger ideas. So if you can take one thing uh, away you know, from this talk today, um, it, it's really that it's not only about working inside of the WordPress ecosystem, right? But understanding that WordPress is but just one component in, in a much larger uh, industry that is growing in so many beautiful ways, right? Like th this event in itself is, is already uh, symbolic of that because we're part of a much larger conference. Um, so, you know, if there's, if there's anything you could do, I guess it's, it's really, or think of, is that WordPress in itself doesn't need to change, right? but it's the way that we use it that does. Thank you.